Hello, it's me, James, and I'm here with Ben. Hello, Ben. Hello. Ben has kindly agreed to uh, join me to talk about the Becky Lynch team that he used to win Roll for the North a little while ago. Um, where, as usual, we're going to go through the background of the team and its composition and his turn three theory, and then we're going to talk a little bit about meta pieces and anything he might change in the future. So without further ado, let's crack on. You can see Becky Lynch, Maiden Island, is on the screen. I think we all know what she does by this time. Um, so Ben, tell us a little bit about how your team evolved. Yeah, it wasn't really anything uh, particularly fancy to be with. It was a Becky Lynch team. Uh, she's obviously the best card in modern, in my opinion. Um, and in classically, paired up with, with Lawler, uh, the Jerry Lawler basic action card, mm -hmm. uh, with the global predominantly. Although I suppose you could buy that action, but basically you can double her overcrushing damage, uh, which is pretty strong. And then pair that with Booker T, which is, uh, again, the global, although the actual action itself allows for some shenanigans but the global forces you to block so basically get becky in the field force a block attack with becky double the overcrushing damage um top level that's 16 damage minus whatever defense you have which coincidentally becky can remove two pieces so that's kind of the main pieces of the puzzle mm -hmm. um and then i guess the second piece as kind of a control piece was uh the danny moonstar which i like we like pairs well with the booker t um and i'd kind of just been thrown on yep um so yeah these are kind of the classic pieces that i would use for a becky team in general principally especially the basic action actions and becky nothing particularly special uh -huh. um and then i also kind of knew i was using lots of fists and lots of shields so um obviously my again in my opinion the best ramp currently we have uh, is the atlantis global which also relies on the fists and shields handle it so Basically, yeah, basically using the Atlantis Global, um, churning through the bag as much as possible, uh, churning through that prep area, getting all the sidekicks out into the field or uh, into your prep area, uh, fielding Becky. If they start using the Atlantis Global, then Becky can reroll those sidekicks if needed, or there's sidekicks left in the field that you can force blocks with. Um, I guess we'll come to kind of the main threats to it later, but the main, main threat for Becky is obviously static field. Um, so kind of used Istrid Horn again, a cheap source of fists, mm -hmm. um, to use the Atlantis global with especially, but also Istrid also, uh, turns off a global ability, which handily turns off static field. Nice. So you kind of have all these things in rotation, right? So you have the Istrid and Atlantis as kind of cheap options for fists and shields. Mm -hmm. You can kind of do this crazy turn three combo thing with Atlantis, the actual action itself. Where if you buy it, you can shove everything into the prep area, turn two, and then roll everything turn three, buy Becky, buy Estrid, yep. and kind of swing on the turn four. Um, so yeah, that was kind of what we were messing around with. This is several months ago. Um, <laughs> who knows when, but yes, a long time ago. And then we, kind of my initial idea, so before Infinity Gauntlet um, was this kind of crazy shenanigans turn three to actually buy... Uh, the next card, which was Triple H. Uh -huh. Who's like the blob, right? Of old. Yeah, who's exactly like the old, old rare blob, was it? Yeah. Yep. So my idea was because Becky was obviously such a threat to me um, in my own head, as well as having her on my team, <laughs> I thought in a mirror match, like if you could use that kind of crazy turn three to either go for Becky or go for Triple H, then you could use Triple H to lock down the Be there of Becky. Yes. Um. So that was kind of the initial thinking, and we did some kind of testing back and forth with that. Um, and I found that it was a real big problem if someone got a Triple H out and stopped the Becky Lynch, especially if they had the next card, um, which is the Blob. Um, mm -hmm. Because Blob and Static Field combined kind of stop your Danny Moonstar mm -hmm. and your Becky, and then you kind of didn't have a way kind of around those two things. I suppose now you kind of use the tombstone maybe um rather than the blob uh -huh. just because he gives you the same kind of ability but with that added intimidate uh -huh. although blobs fielding costs are a bit better <laughs> just a bit. um so yeah you kind of needed some kind of removal uh to get around that so i was testing this with nick wale um who's a really good player and really really frustrating to play against when your becky doesn't roll <laughs> uh 
So yeah, so kind of had those two pieces on, and then it was kind of mirror matchy, uh, and then we started kind of throwing on uh, Songbird for the three cost intimidate, mm -hmm. um, which kind of a way around because obviously we didn't have the tombstone which has intimidate built in, so maybe you could pivot to that now. But um, this Songbird was mainly to remove the blob so that you could do the Danny to get rid of the triple H or use it to just get rid of the triple H so you could feel Becky to get rid of the blob. Whatever it was, it was kind of a lockdowny team with Becky. It's kind of just like I can control you and then just feel Becky and win, basically. Yeah, um, was the idea, and that was kind of getting to me how controlly that was. Mm -hmm. So I thought actually maybe there's a better way of kind of doing the overcrush damage that I need to. So also because it was thematic, I guess I went with an Aquaman with Strike. Uh huh. Um. And strike is really great actually because if on turn one you buy so if you go second you can use the becky lynch global itself um mm -hmm. to buy an aquaman get into your prep area for turn two and then if they happen to field a sidekick you can field the aquaman attack with the strike ability double it with the um jerry lawler Ooh. you're doing a good chunk of change yeah <laughs> um the pro or alternatively, they don't feel the sidekick. You just use the Aquaman uh, as shields and buy a Becky anyway. Uh -huh. So that be kind of became my pivot. You could also do this with the Black Canary as well, um, which they have. They have basically the same attack, same fielding costs. Aquaman has slightly better defense, which actually is a bit of a problem because he's harder to rotate as a result. Uh -huh. um, but Black Canary is really good if you have Cree Captain, for example, because you roll two fists and then you have two fists to use the Cree Captain global, which reduces um, any die you buy by three. So you can get a bit of cheapness on Becky. Yep. Yep. Um, so there's kind of a bit of a toss up. So I kind of started playing with this team and then the Infinity Gauntlet drops. So I replaced Triple H with the Drax, the rare Drax. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. And kind of had these other control pieces, so we kind of started swapping out Triple H for yeah the Drax, and then the Blob uh, kind of swapped out for the Typhoid Mary. Um, so yeah, kind of just basically was just like replaced the two control pieces uh, with more versatile ones because Drax is obviously the same as Triple H, but three less. Yep. Um, I think same fielding cost and everything as well as well. Uh, just slightly better, worse stats, but not too much. Um, and then Typhoid Mary is just to kind of cover all rather than the blob, which specifically stopped kind of the Istrid, um, Eddie Guerrero, Danny Moonstar, kind of two costly characters. Yep. This stops anything you want. Yep. Um, and actually, as a result of kind of swapping to these two control pieces, I was more and more convinced that no one would run the um, the blob. So I, I swapped back in Gazer for Songbird because it's just a two cost, so it's a bit cheaper. Mm -hmm. and shield as well um so you, you kind of just use that to get rid of any kind of drax uh opposing draxes um so yeah that kind of played along for a little bit i uh, worked out a couple of tournaments with those things in and quickly realized that um actually one of the problems with aquaman and focusing on that was that aquaman and istrid horn don't really line up together um because uh -huh. you can't field strike and field Istrid Horn because Strike only works if it's the only character you field that turn. Yep. So obviously the solution to that to get around Static Field was to put on an Eddie Guerrero. Um who I mentioned a bit before, but basically Eddie basically stops an opponent using static field against your strike guys, so you could line that up a bit better. Mm -hmm. I still felt that was ultimately kind of clunky. Um so Playing with it more and more, I was just kind of like, Aquaman's a really cool ability, and like having Aquaman and Atlantis is really nice, but ultimately, um, it kind of detracts from the point, which is Becky Lynch. Yeah. And you already kind of have an inbuilt pivot with the Danny Moonstar as well, right. especially one that won't get shut off as much with the um, without the blob. So, Aquaman's yeah, I kind of just... A bit of a sidetrack. Yeah. Dropped Aquaman, uh, focused more on the Atlantis ramp, or if I needed to, going for gazers early. Uh, and that's kind of how the team came about to where it got to you for uh, Roll for the North. Okay. Uh, I think I've got uh, your whole team. There we go. Yeah, I can show your whole team there. Um, <clears throat> yeah. I think it's quite nice that you have that. I remember the whole thing when I first started playing, uh, the, the, the advice was to have cheap things in each of the energy types or in several of the energy types so you never stuck to buy yeah. something. 
And you've got that, interestingly. You've got bolts and two lots of two-cost shields and masks and fists, so you can always buy something useful. I do, yeah, I know. So the Eddie Guerrero, I think probably the flex spot or the Istrid Horn, depending on whichever style you like better. Mm-hmm. Um, but actually having them both gives you kind of the flexibility of um, are you going to be able to cycle the Istrid Horn is the main problem. Are you going to be able to get enough Istrid Horns to stop enough globals? Um, and then Eddie Guerrero works really well against stuff that isn't the Thor um, with static field. Because he can be but because it stops out, right? everything. But, but Eddie Guerrero can be pinged out, which is kind of a vulnerability of him. Um, so it's kind of a toss up between the two. So it's nice having both options. I had the space, so I included both. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. And what was your what was your buy order? Assuming you know nothing untoward on the other side of the field, just your standard turn three theory, so to speak, would be. Yeah. So the main theory is uh, actually, like you said, I have a, a variety of options, but generally. If they had a Godcatcher, I bought Gazer. Um, yep. And then Atlantis <laughs> ramped as much as I could. Yep. Um, Familiar with that. <laughs> yeah. If they had Static Field, I bought Istrid as early as I could, and then Atlantis as much as I could. Mm-hmm. Um, and if they had none of them, I just bought Atlantis itself and Atlantis as much as I could, uh, including sometimes missing my second go entirely, not buying anything, and just using as much Atlantis ramp as I could. Um, that kind of ensured enough sidekicks out in the field. No one else was really running Becky that I came across. Uh, so yeah, you could just wall up with sidekicks, basically clear them all out of your bag, and yeah, then that's what, that's what I wanted to ask actually, because if if the other opponent is playing Becky, then sidekicks are a bit of a liability, aren't they? Yeah, they are. Yeah, and then maybe so maybe you would swap in um, Intellect of Arrow. Like maybe next time I play this, I might do that mm-hmm. just so I can spin them down. But that gives your opponent opponent the opportunity to do that. So. Don't know. You could always just be really aggressive with them. Um, so yeah, I don't know. It, it's a bit of a toss-up. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, well, okay. That's that's if they. Well, you've you mentioned a couple of things. In fact, that the that you might see on the other side of the board, like Godcatcher, for example. Um, I think I've got a few slides with control pieces or stuff that you might see. And the first one I think is is static field, which we have talked about. So that's the biggest pain. Yeah, a big pain in the bum. But you've got you've got. Um, couple of things to deal with that that you've already talked about yeah it'd be interesting to see how i would deal with um a static field plus kate bishop i don't know if anyone would ever do that <laughs> but it seemed especially early in the becky days people kind of thought about doing that mm-hmm. um, running both globals just because then history horn has a really tough time yeah i can see that might be an issue. stopping both that's why eddie guerrero is a nice kind of option to have Mm-hmm. in tandem with that but then um outside of static field i guess you have like the traditional kind of ways around becky um or stopping over crush in general so there's a few but kind of the main one is uh poison ivy mm-hmm. i don't find poison ivy too much of a problem um specifically against becky because you kind of always are carrying becky which becomes great uh-huh. yeah. um because you can just refield becky the next time but there's a few abilities like the poison ivy basically where they don't take any damage from attacking characters Mm-hmm. Uh, there's like a wolf guard terminator which reduces it to one and then a mastermind or whatever yep. um but because becky's when fielded ability and you have the drax and you have the typhoon mary and you have the gazer if you need them um that they 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 sort of pose a problem but not as much of a problem as the global speed uh static field kind of things yeah um but i guess a better version or uh, more, more painful to deal with is the kind of big big e um, because they can kind of just not block. They don't have to kind of engage Becky. They just can let Becky through, mm-hmm. and then Becky goes to the use pile, which then you have to get back round. And although you have Atlantis, and generally my philosophy is churn rather than do anything, anything else. Um, yeah, yeah, rather than buying more dice. Buying anything, yeah. Mm-hmm. Churn over buying, always. Um but the sending stuff to users is always a problem. And then, yeah, you, I kind of guess you can skip through the Drax, which is a... Drax works for me, uh, yeah. so it will work for you. Stop Becky. Yeah. And then I guess the next one I want to talk about is Red Spider-Man, mm-hmm. which also has the same thing, where if you can get Becky trapped in the field, then you can kind of spin down uh, her and send her to the use pile. Right. And because Atlantis only works when you have a fist and a shield it's very easy to kind of spin down one of your big characters 
uh, to something else. It also stops mic control as well, right? The Drax and Typhoid Mary. Yeah. Um, and it works really well in tandem with the Thor, which I faced a couple of times, this kind of Spider-Man Thor combo, and it was really good. Um, but yeah, all the all the kind of general control pieces. Presumably Becky and gets rid of them half of the time when she when she's filled. She does, you'd think. But then it's <laughs> slightly less than half, really, because then you also have to roll Becky in and then roll them out. It's not right. as consistent as I would like. That's why you have the Drax and Typhoid Mary backing up. Yeah. Um, but I guess on the day, uh, speaking specifically, the Thor was very quick in giving it the Atlantis Global on top of uh, the um, Collector Global, which they generally had, was mm -hmm. very, very strong for Thor players. Um, and that's maybe something I'd think about, maybe swapping in uh, Black Widow or something. I don't know. Rare to one. kind of try and slow that down. The uh, promo one. Uh, oh, sure. Just okay, sure. Yeah, yeah. To try and reduce the uh, ping damage. Yeah. Because again, it stops the Danny Moonstar and the Eddie Guerrero as well. Um, but yeah, no, I, I think Thor was a big problem for me because in that last of the final game, I kind of threw everything at it, which was kind of a mistake. I, I draxed it and I Typhoid married Thor, allowing oh. his rare Spider Man to kind of do a lot of damage to me. Um, but yeah, there's, there's a when I should have split the things up, right? I could have just blanked the Thor with a Drax or yep. a Typhoid Mary and then stopped the. Spider-Man with the other one. Yeah. In fact, I don't need bought a Spider-Man, mm -hmm. so I should have dragged that, and then you wouldn't be able to buy it. So, mm -hmm. yeah, there was there were several ways to go, but I found this was the biggest problem for me. The Super I thought on the day, uh, mm -hmm. Godcatcher, I played quite a few times, but didn't actually ever have a problem with it as <laughs> such because I was Atlanticing in so much. Yes. Um, although, if you if you come up against what's it called, that's uh, under surveillance. It's a bit because I, I I played. Ben and he, yeah. beat, he beat me handily using the technique he's already suggested but under surveillance I didn't have I had Villainous Pact and that would get around your surfeit of psychics a little bit it would, um, actually I played one game where I bought some under surveillances um, <laughs> just to kind of, but again you're adding, the good thing about that quick the quickness of the Villainous Pact variant is that generally you don't even need the Villainous Pact to buy it you kind of can just hit with the global, like it's at global speed rather than having to buy another dice. Yes. Uh, because the longer you're waiting around for those under surveillances to line up, the more chance I have to intimidate out your god catcher. And then Gaze did a lot of work for me in oh, that for respect. Sure. For sure. But you, your, your strategy is to get people bogged down with psychics and then intimidate yeah. them out of existence, um, which worked very well indeed. But if I'd had that instead of Villainous Back, I maybe could have not got Quicker. bogged down yeah. quite so much, I think. No. Um, but then if you're fielding a bunch of psychics, which you kind of have to do, it kind of works in my favor as well. Yeah, to kind sure. of thin your bag to get those two actions out. I was very wary um, of fielding psychics. And that's I, I find that the most... Uh, I think you've said before that the worst thing about Becky is the sending to used. But I yeah. find the whole the fact that I can't leave psychics out without yeah. running the risk of taking 15 damage. I find that to be the worst thing. Really. Um, maybe it's psycho the... psychological even, because uh, I just... You know, I don't like to risk it even, having been caught mm -hmm. twice. Well, it's yeah, it's not even just the... Cause it's not actually that effectual, really, because you're just removing maybe two pieces and doing two damage, which actually isn't a huge amount. But um, psychologically, anything that messes up kind of what you expected to be in your use pile is just so annoying. Yeah, yeah. Um, because, yeah, so uh, the other thing with Becky as well is if you... Leave some psychics. You don't always have to roll them all all the psychics out. It says Becky Lynch says up to two, so you don't have to roll. You can just leave one psychic in the field as the kind of Booker T fodder. Yes, and you can actually do zero. We looked into this, I think. Yeah, uh, yeah. Because her fielding itself is is an action. Um, so yeah, it's, it's not doing it for nothing as it would be with an action die or something with the, or Professor. Right. Most of most of the time, the Booker T and Jerry Lawler are kind of just more threats um, yeah. rather than practical pieces. They're just enough there by themselves. Yeah, um, yeah for sure. But also uh, another kind of good way around God catches, especially is don't be afraid to use Jerry Lawler and on the Becky Lynch just to KO some God catches, not even necessarily to do no crushing damage. Yeah. Just if a um, God catches in the field, forced it to block and then kill it with the Becky. Your Becky rolls out and their tokens lost in the uh, ether. Yeah, 
Yep, it's a pretty handy team. Um, there is, I think, one one more card we wanted to talk about, which was sort of what you might change in the more distant future. You mentioned one or two things, but um, I think the last card. Yeah, I think the. Go on. Yeah, there's a, there's a few things that you might change in, like the Intellect Devourer for Eddie Guerrero and all the, the Black Widow. There's a few pieces, but the one that's big over the horizon is the Gladiator. Gladiator. Yeah, we put just the rare one because it's just a cheap four cost um, with bonkers stats. But I think there's also another one which has Overcrush inbuilt. I think yeah. it's six cost, though. Yeah, I'm, but, I'm I mean, as a second pivot piece... That's not bad. Just okay. You're stopping my Becky with Typhoid Mary and Drax. Well, I'll just buy the Gladiator and overcrush you that way. <laughs> um, but this this global replaces the Istrid Horn and the Eddie Guerrero, and I'm not sure we have any way to stop it. Really, um, it just says pair fist, and then they can't use Static Field. Basically, it's gross. Uh, it's pretty disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like the Istrid Horn and Eddie Guerrero, we've kind of mentioned. There are some problems with them. Mistred Horn gets bogged down in the field and Eddie Guerrero can be pinged off by Thor or something. Yeah. Um, or Iceman. But the Gladiator, yeah, you can't really... Um, the Global, what can you do to stop the Global? Not really anything. We need um, Wonder Woman back for, for those purposes. At least. <clears throat> I think so, for sure. I think you need something that stops Globals entirely. Uh, or the Wrecker, the rare Wrecker. You yeah. stop just Globals entirely. Your, your favourite. Pretty strong. <laughs> Are you advocating for favorite. the return of rare Wrecker? Well, I was not advocating for the return of this Global, which was on the Doom no. Caliber Knight, right? No, I'm, um, I'm surprised. I love Globals because they're so much faster than buying characters, right? Mm -hmm. But this is just really strong, and it's pretty makes Becky even more scary, I think. It makes yeah. Godcatcher also equally scary, but... It makes, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Terrifying stuff. <laughs> WizKids, what have you done? Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, thank you very much indeed, Ben. That has been, uh, that's been extremely educational. Um, thanks for coming on. And I hope the listeners have found that to be as useful and entertaining as I have. And uh, hopefully you can uh, use that knowledge in a forthcoming tournament like uh, Worlds. And um, if you enjoyed that, please don't forget to like and subscribe and do those things that I feel uncomfortable asking you to do. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I think that's all for now. So thank you, Ben, and bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.